Hi right, guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to 3305. This is where I take a look at the news and happenings in and around Elite Dangerous. This week, Frontier confirmed that fleet carriers and ice worlds are still on the way. Official Elite Dangerous author Drew Wager discusses Raxler and the Frontier sign up a new global IP. Last week, Lave Radio interviewed Will Flanagan and Sally Morgan Moore from Frontier. It was a great interview, and of course the subject of 2020 content came up, which Frontier was unfortunately unable to go into detail on. However, one very interesting subject that did come up was the subject of fleet carriers and improved ice worlds, both of which were cut from a Chapter 4 release of Beyond. Well, Frontier confirmed that these features are still in development and will be arriving at some point in the future. Whilst they didn't state when these features would be implemented, it was nonetheless good to have confirmation that they haven't been cancelled, as many players have been uh, kind of speculating that the features have been cut and were never going to turn up. And in fact, a large part of that speculation come from the fact that Frontier have been a bit poor in the communication about this. Now, just to fill you in on the details of what fleet carriers are all about, just in case you may have missed it, fleet carriers are essentially giant ships that players will be able to own and control, or to put it another way, the idea seems to be that they would function as a mobile headquarters for your squadron. Ice Worlds are of course currently in the game, however Frontier have been working on improvements to these, and based on concept art that they showed all the way back in 2017, the improvements looked to be substantial. At Lavecon 2018, Frontier also showed off some new surface ice shaders. Whether or not these are the precise implementations of what Ice Worlds will eventually be in the game, we will have to wait and see, but either way, Frontier have confirmed that they are on the way. For the full interview with Frontier, which I highly recommend listening to, do check out the link in the video description. Author and official Elite Dangerous novel writer Drew Wager recently discussed that subject that just won't go away, the topic of Raxler, the thing that is so mysterious that almost nothing is known about it. As of Chapter 4, Raxler gained an in-game codex entry, now, Drew Wager has been involved in elite lore for many years and in fact has written quite a part of it. Now, it's always interesting to hear him both talk about writing in general as well as elite specifically. So to watch the section on Raxler from his uh, live stream, take a look at the link in the video description where you can see his an uploaded uh, YouTube video to his channel. Now, Redditor Commander Grand Poppy recently wondered about the size of those landing pads that we see in stations, outposts and surface sites. The thing of it is that these are really not small, however scale is very hard to judge in space, and for some reason, scale can be even harder to judge in Elite Dangerous. So Grand Poppy is here to help with that. Through this great image that really does highlight just how massive the large landing pads actually are, gives pause, doesn't it, to consider what space legs might be like when it comes to the sense of scale. The team behind the wonderful Sagittarius Eye magazine are now live streaming over on Twitch. The stream focuses on the release of the latest magazine, discussing many of the issues that are found within it. Below you can find a link to their Twitch channel, which should also contain details of their streaming schedule and just about everything else you need to know, so do go over and take a look. For those of you who have been among the Elite Dangerous community for a number of years now, you will likely remember Lee Hutchinson's Awesome Fangs comic. This is an Elite Dangerous inspired noir series that has a great story to tell. Now, after a long gap, the series finally concludes with the latest release. On screen, you can see some of the artwork that the series features, and as you can tell, it's a very nice looking indeed. You can find the necessary links below. Last week, news arrived that Frontier have signed a new game deal. Now, whilst this isn't directly related to Elite Dangerous, it's nonetheless an interesting subject that does have relevance to the Elite developers. The new deal is described to be for an undisclosed global IP to be released in 2021. So, of course, Frontier haven't discussed exactly what the IP is for, but it seems to be an international property, and they do have experience with this, as they had massive financial success with Jurassic World Evolution last year. Meanwhile, their next game, described only as Franchised 4 but still unannounced, they haven't given a title, at least publicly, will be releasing later this year. They also have plans to release another new game in 2020. Including their currently released lineup, Frontier have a total of 8 games in various stages of development. That then brings us to an end of this episode of 3305. As always, thanks for watching. 
and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.